it's walking into that situation and saying, I'm here to help other people. I'm not here to, I, I'm not here to meet quota. I'm not here to have all my problems solved. I, I'm here to help other people. And when you walk into the room with that mindset, you, you really kind of take on a whole different persona. Um, and nobody's going to reject that person who's there to help other people. My guest today is Frank Agan. Here's three facts that I think you should know about Frank. One, he is president of Am Spirit Business Connections, which empowers entrepreneurs, sales reps, and professionals to become successful through networking. Two, he hosts the Networking RX podcast, which has insights and interviews related to better business relationships. And he's the author of several books, including Foundational Networking. And three, over a 10 year period, Frank took approximately 250,000 pictures of high school and college sports. He tells me that purchasing a high end sports photography camera was the best investment he ever made and he has never taken a dime for the pictures. Uh, you see over the years, he's received millions worth of smiles, thank yous, and feeling of joy from happy players and parents. Frank Agan, welcome to your intended message. Thanks, George. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on. Um, thank you to Scott Mason for connecting us. Uh, his episode just uh, just dropped uh, on October 27th, and I was listening to that. He's, he's a hard act to follow. I hope there's a buffer between us. <laughs> Scott Mason is certainly one one of a kind, and yeah. as, we, as we all are. Yeah. And Frank, uh, it, listeners might have already picked up the hint by now from the introduction. We're going to talk about networking, and we're going to talk about networking getting back in the room again. Uh, remember the old style networking yeah. uh, before there was Zoom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even before LinkedIn. Yeah, I mean... Um... You know, I always tell people that uh, networking is nothing new. It's it's. I have a friend who says it's as old as dirt. It's not quite that old, but uh, we as humans, um, well, I guess let's step back and let's just define networking. Maybe that's a first step. Um, and networking certainly gets a bad rap. People will equate it to um, bad sales, high end, high, high pressure sales. And it's really anything but I term networking or define networking as two or more people working towards their mutual benefit. Um, and so that really covers a lot of ground. And I'll go out and I'll talk to groups about networking. And the, one of the questions I'll, I'll, you know, I'll ask people, how do you feel about yourself as a networker? Scale of one to five, five being, hey, I'm great. I get a lot of ones and twos and I have to challenge people because it's like, you know, you're probably better than you think. Um, people are, you know, have spouses and significant others. Well, how did you meet that person? You know, it's generally a networking story. You know, you might have kids. How do you find a babysitter? You know, how do you choose to go to one movie or a play or travel or whatever, or, or, you know, one thing over another? Well, it's networking. We're gathering information. It's that the, our networking helping one another. And uh, it's been around for a long time. And uh, someone who shares your namesake, George, George Washington, uh, got Betsy Ross to sew, sew the first American flag. They met each other in church. So, you know, it's networking is not uh, from the 1980s or the 70s or the new millennia. Um, it's been around with us for a long time. And networking I'm getting the feeling that networking is about, it sounds like it's about conversation. It is, you know, but I, I go through, uh, in preparing for this, I went through uh, the litany of different episodes you have on uh, your intended message podcast. And, you know, it really covers a lot of things like uh, uh, Doug Knoll had, uh, uh, did the episode before um, Scott and was on calming someone in 90 seconds. Well, you know, 
it, it has to do with communicating, but it really has to do with relationships. Um, and communicating encompasses relationships, but it also encompasses other things as well. How we show up in the world, um, you know, which kind of ties into Scott Mason's talk about charisma. And so, you know, it's really kind of a broad topic and it opens the door for me to uh, talk to lots of different people, help lots of different people in lots of different ways. Now, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe people approach networking, well, there, there tend to be two extremes, and, and yes, there's ones in the middle, but the two extremes, on one end, it's the, it's the unconfident, shy, introverted person who's afraid, afraid, you know, reluctant mm -hmm. to even speak up, and, and they don't want to impose on anyone. And then at the other end of the scale, there's that arrogant SOB who just thinks that everyone wants to hear them talk and d declare their views of the universe. <laughs> and so how do we find that happy medium? Um, you know, it's, it, yeah, there are both extremes. And I, I had a psychologist on my podcast several years ago, and he kind of dissected, you know, the, the, you know, he, he said there are really three people in the room. He said, you know, there's the, you know, there's the wallflower, there's the person who is braggadocious, um, and then, you know, there's the person who's trying to make the quick sale. And then really the fourth person in the room is the, is the person doing it right. Um, and he said the thing that all of them have in common, all four of them have in common, is they're all insecure. You know, the person who feels like they need to always be talking, they're insecure. I got to get my message out. The person who needs to make the sale, they're insecure. They just, I need to close the deal. The person who's the wallflower feels insecure, but the person who does it right is insecure as well, but just has learned how to deal with that insecurity. And um, to be honest, I'm an introvert, George. Um, I, you know, I was, before we hit record, I, we were sharing, I was, you know, working with leaves here in the Midwest, you know, dealing with the fall. And uh, it's just, it's, you know, it's part of, it's part of living in the Midwest, um, which beats the hell out of a hurricane, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, but I kind of enjoy that quiet time, you know, with headphones in just, you know, or just going to a movie by myself. I don't need to have people around me. Um, but to answer your question, how, how you, move yourself towards the middle, how you be, how you can become that fourth person as in, in my example, I always tell people to put on what I call a cloak of invincibility. And what the cloak of invincibility is simply this, George, it's just walking into that situation and saying, I'm here to help other people. I'm not here to, I, I'm not here to meet quota. I'm not here to have all my problems solved. Um, I'm here to, I'm here to help other people. And when you walk into the room with what, again, the cloak of invincibility, that mindset, not invisibility, invincibility, you, you really kind of take on a whole different persona. Um, and it's, nobody's going to reject that person who's there to help other people. And so all of a sudden, you kind of transform yourself from, you know, I don't need to be the wallflower. I'm here to help other people. And the reason the person's the wallflower is they're afraid that they're going to be rejected. Um, and so if they just kind of step into, I want to hear what this other person has to say, because there might be a way, I might have information that'll help them. I might have an introduction that'll help them. I might have, you know, um, somebody to refer them to, depending upon the situation. And so I think that's how that one side the, the wallflower moves to the middle. And I think, you know, the person who is the braggadocious, the person who always needs to be taking up oxygen in the room, I think they just need to realize that that's, it's off-putting um, and just relax and you will learn a lot more. You will develop better relationships by listening, just stopping and listening and seeing where you can help other people. So it really kind of kind of helps both ends of the spectrum and pulls people towards the middle. The ones that are that fear rejection, 
I imagine that you are only going to be rejected if you are there to sell. Yeah. Yes. You're, yeah. you're not you're not going to be rejected if you're there to ask questions and listen. Right. That's exactly it. Um, and it, I, I don't even know, know if it's necessarily selling, but just being well, being accepted is part of selling. We're not always just out there selling, you know, hey, I'm in the room and I'm I'm in transition. I'm in job transition. And, you know, that's uh, you know, I guess that's a form of selling. But just being accepted is 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 really I guess we're always selling. We always have something to sell. Hey, would you go on a date with me? Would you marry me? Those are you know, those are big sales questions, you know, um, you know, can I borrow your mower? That's a sales question. So selling is really a, a big part of what we do. But yeah, when you're, you know, when you're looking to help other people, you are not, you're not on, you're not, you can't be rejected. If you're there, if you're looking to help other people, what might the conversation sound like? Yeah, it's, you know, it varies from situation to situation. I always, I always tell people when you get into the, when we start getting into small talk, it always starts with small talk. Um, and like anything, you know, you go, I tell people, think about the best client that you would ever go see, right. Or prospective client or a job interview, you're going to prepare. So don't go to the networking event unprepared, have a sense in, in your mind, how it's going to, how it's going to work. Um, you know, with respect to small talk, I tell people, think about it, listen to other people having small talk. You know, I mean, if, you know, whether it's at the airport on a subway or just what people are having small talk all around us and you can kind of listen to how it flows, but then envision yourself having small talk and how it, how it's going to, you know, how it's going to work. And so it's going to vary from situation to situation. One of the questions I like asking people is how did you get started in business or how did you get started in that career? Because you're giving them a platform to talk about. And again, you know, you're, you're helping them. You're making them, Hey, somebody's interested in me and definitely be interested in them. Don't just ask the question and check your watch. Um, be very interested in them. And so you sort of get them talking about the things that they, you know, that they're a value to them. Uh, I'll give you an example of how these things can unfold. I was at, at went to a networking event, a face-to-face -face networking event, uh, Midwest. It was the winter. We get snow, right? You get snow in the Northeast. We it's, it's part of life again, better than a hurricane. Um, so I'm at the event and I come in to you know, meet somebody and, you know, right away, it's just like, we're grasping for things we have in common. Oh my God, can you believe how much snow we're getting? And the woman said to me, I love the snow. I love to ski. My husband and I go skiing, you know, we're really looking forward to going skiing. This is great. And, oh, wow. Now I grew up in, in Northern Michigan, so I'm not a skier, but I know enough about skiing to head down that little path, right? I'm not. I'm not going to steer any other direction. Oh, skiing, you know, where do you ski? You know, so in Columbus, Ohio is pretty flat, but there are places around here you can go skiing um, and just let her share and let her share. And then from there, just segued into, well, skiing's kind of an expensive sport. What do you do to pay for it? Right. And so then she's, you know, goes into, you know, what she does. So, yeah, I'm not trying to sell her on anything. I'm just trying to draw things out. Oh, that's very interesting. How long have you been a financial advisor? How did you get involved in that? You know, and then there's a story um, or where people are from, you know, people aren't necessarily, you know, yeah. people aren't for the most part, aren't from Columbus, Ohio. That's changing as time's gone on, but it's really had a lot of influx of people, it has a lot of people coming in with big retailers, um, big insurance companies. And, uh, and so people come here from the coast and they always have a story as to how they got here. Uh, I always joke it usually involves a woman. Um, you know, I, I ran into a guy who was a patent attorney. Well, how, why are you here? Well, my wife's from here. Okay, say no more. Um, so it's just really kind of having just kind of almost a nonsensical conversation. But that's what people want. That's what people are most comfortable with. And the purpose of that nonsensical conversation 
What is it? Well, it's to make people comfortable. It's about mm-hmm. building relationship is really what it is. When, what I tell people is, is if you're in a conversation and it is not going to go anywhere, right? Um, well, let, let's use dating as an example. If you go on that first date and it's horrible, you just want to get the hell home as fast as you can. Where do you, you know, no matter who you are, right? You just want to get home and be done with it. Well, it's the same thing with with networking. If you're in a conversation with somebody and you just want to head for the hills, you know what? You're best to kind of get out of that conversation as soon as possible. But if it's something, but if it's a situation where um, there's some longevity to it, you don't have to play out the whole it would go back to dating. You know, this first date is great. You don't have to play out the whole relationship right then and there. You don't have to decide what the kids are going to be named or, you know, where, you know, where you're going to spend the holidays. You just let it play out. And so it's the same thing with these, you know, when you go to these events, wow, I really like this person. This person could be a good client or could be a good source of clients for me. You don't need to play that all out right there. You just need to make them comfortable enough than to have another conversation. Let me go back to my story about the skier. You know, she shared a whole lot about herself and I stay in conversations for maybe 20, 25 minutes. You don't want to burn it out. There's other people you want to meet. And I just ended, I, I kind of wrapped it up by saying, you know what, it's been great talking to you. And assuming you don't get hurt on the ski hills, on the slopes this weekend, um, I'd love to have a cup of coffee with you and kind of continue the conversation. There's some other people here I need to talk to, or, you know, um, or I told myself I would meet three great people today and you're number one. I need, still need to meet two others. Um, likewise she did as well. Um, and you just kind of move on, but I I knew enough and had enough of a relationship that I could have the coffee meeting. And then from the coffee meeting saying, you know what, there are a couple of people I need to introduce you to. And then she might say, well, there's some people I need to introduce you to. And that doesn't all happen. That doesn't all need to happen in that 20 minutes, you know, over a cup of coffee at some chamber event or some open house. And that's where people run astray is like, okay, how do you, how do you make it all happen? You know, how do you close the deal? You don't, it's about starting a relationship. Hmm. And Frank, what I noticed is that you identified, um, you know, attending a networking event with, with a goal of meeting three great people. Um, as opposed to uh, the, the ones who I've seen who go there and try to collect as many business cards mm. as they can get. Look at all the cards I got. Isn't it a great networking session? Mm. Yeah. You know, there's a great there's great little uh, bit in a book by a friend of mine, Berta uh, Medina. And she says, when I go to a networking event, there are going to be five people. I look to collect five business cards. When I go to a networking event, there's 100 people. I look to collect five business cards. And that's kind of her goal um, is, you know, I'm not trying to meet everybody in the room. I don't need to meet everybody in the room. And that's another thing that people, you know, they walk into a room and say, okay, who's the person? Well, you don't know who the person is. It's like advertising. 50% of ad dollars are wasted, right? You just don't know what 50%. Well, you know, in this room, you're going to, if you meet five people, two of them are really not going to be necessarily great people but you don't know who those people are. And it could be the per you, the person you think is not going to be of value to you may end up being a great value to you. Um, and the person who you think is going to be a game changer, you know, is, is not, it's going to hardly fog a mirror, right? I mean, the, the relationship itself, right? It's, you know, you just don't know. And so I just tell people don't, you know, because you, you could spend an entire event looking around trying to size people up. Well, he's in a suit, you know, he's not, you know, <clears throat> who looks like they could be a good client. You're, you're not going to know. We're all connected. So eventually you'll connect with the right people. Frank, you pointed out that you are an introvert. What steps did you take to be more effective as an introvert and suffer less pain <laughs> Of, yeah. of being in the crowd. Well, again, it gets back to the cloak of invincibility. I'm walking in and I'm I'm trying to find ways to help people. I just trust that people will do things for me. That, that, well, I just I I believe in karma. I, I just trust that it'll come back to me. And 
and it generally does. Um, when you get out there and you help people, they want to help you in return. It's just, it's human nature. And so you don't need to have any sorts of expectation. They'll try and figure it out. Um, not everybody, but most people are like that and they're looking for ways to, to help. And so I don't really worry too much about it. If people ask me, okay, what are things that they could help me with? Uh, I, you know, generally will have an answer. Um, you know, I'm looking for, to meet these people. I'm looking for people on my podcast. I'm looking for whatever. Um, and then they're excited to be able to help, but I don't really have an expectation. And sometimes people will ask, oh, you know, how can I help you? And I'll cite something and they're like, oh, geez, I don't know anybody. And my response then is don't worry about it. I don't keep score, right? It's in your head. Something will come along. There'll be an opportunity. And um, it's just, you know, you just, you're just kind of planting seeds out there. And, and then those people will make connections for you. And, you know, I, I analogize networking to golf. You know, you don't go out on the golf course and you don't, you're not, it's not a game of hitting holes, holes in one. It's a game of taking a little white ball, hitting it down a fairway down, a, you know, thousands of thousands, hundreds of yards um, to a hole you can't even see, but you just know it's there. You're operating on faith. And the same thing with networking. You know, Scott's introduced me to you, you know, and then it goes from there. I've got some people I'll send you and it just we just keep playing, you know, keep playing this metaphorical round of golf. And eventually somebody is contacting you and saying, you have exactly what I need. And it sounds like the easiest form of helping people is introducing them to someone else. I mean, that is, that's one way. I mean, you know, I think somebody just needs to take a scroll down uh, your guest list of, you know, in, uh, your intended message. And there are lots of ways we can help people, you know, um, you know, storytelling. Well, the, you know, the, the one I do need to listen to is, you know, how do you diffuse somebody who's angry? Um, those are things, you know, networking's about, certainly referrals. It's certainly about introductions. It's certainly about sharing information and opportunities. It's also about encouragement, um, you know, encouraging people. Those are all the things that, you know, how we, all the different ways we can help people. Making introductions is certainly something that's relatively easy because the best thing we, the easiest thing we have to share with our network is our network. You have a hundred people in your network. They don't all know each other. You're going to have a litany of people that don't know each other, and it's a very simple thing to connect them. And and Frank, I noticed uh, a networking session that I went to years ago, and I remember mentally preparing, and and I I, did, I wasn't aware of this cloak of invincibility, but what I did was take the pressure off myself, and I said to myself, I'm not here to get business. I'm here to connect other people. So as I was meeting people, the question I would ask is, who would you most like to meet in the room today? Mm, yeah. And, and then I might, and I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know yet, but maybe I'll get back to you. Or sometimes I was able to, you know what? What you're talking about, I this person over here, I just finished, let me, let me introduce you. And so I'm through the evening, I made the course, uh, I made at least three introductions right in the room. And I left that room. I had no business leads for me, and yet I still felt good. Mm -hmm. Well, you had no business leads for you, but you set in motion, you know, karma, you know, I mean, it's, you know, we can divine intervention, however you want to term it. Uh, it's you set those things in motion. And I, you know, I run into people all the time. It's like, you have no idea what you've done for me. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I just made an introduction. It was, you know, I'm, I, I'm no poorer for it. You know, again, it gets back to the camera story and all the pictures I shared, you know, I got to go be down on the field. A lot of games I didn't have to pay to go into, right. I had a camera, you know, let the boy in. Um, he's got a camera. Um, you know, and it's and it's the same sort of thing. You have no idea what kind of goodwill you make happen out there, and you know, eventually people figure it out, and they they want to help. With that's just reciprocity is kind of hardwired into the human into the human experience, and uh, 
you know, I would imagine those people, you know, it's like us talking about Scott Mason, right? I mean, Scott brought us together. You know, it's a, it's a win for both of us. And you mentioned that one of the ways of helping people is encouraging them. And, and I suppose that in a, in a good conversation, at some point, if that person is having a challenge or a struggle, as we all are at some point, if yeah. not all the time, that may come out. And you're not there to, uh, uh, to be a, a, a doctor. <laughs> However, by listening to their story, you might be able to tell them your experience or the experience of someone else you know who's been yeah. through this challenge or maybe even introduce them to, you know, this person is three steps ahead of you in the process. Perhaps they can help you. Yeah. No, I, I remember um, part of my backstory. I used to be an attorney as well, and I was in private practice before I got into doing what I'm doing now. And I was in a networking group, uh, actually the organization I now own. Um, but I remember going into a particular meeting and it was on the heels of finding out that I had a client who wasn't going to pay me. You know, just, I, I'm not going to pay you. Um, and just kind of being devastated by that. I never really didn't think that was part of the, I, you know, did, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> That's not right. You know, but it wasn't enough money that you're going to, you know, I was smart enough. I'm not going to take this person to court. It's just, it's money's lost. And it was just kind of that sense of I lost money, you know? Um, and I remember being at the, the, the meeting and talking to somebody and saying, hey, you seem a little down. And I said, yeah, I just had a client and build them 500 bucks. I don't know what it, that was. It. it wasn't a lot. And, um, I don't think I'm going to collect on it. And he just chuckled as the, yeah, welcome to the party. You're that's going to happen, you know? And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a tough love sort of a thing, but at that moment I snapped out of it and realized, you know what? This person survived it. I'm going to survive it. These things are going to happen. And that wasn't the first monies I didn't get paid to me. And you just kind of realize that, you know, I didn't, I need to have a, a degree of resiliency and durability and this person here has set that example. And he didn't, he didn't mean to encourage me, but that's really what he did is like, yeah, it happens. You can be mad about it, but just move on. Okay, you're right. I'm going to move on. You know, maybe there's a way I can prevent it. But And F Frank, I, I think that's an example of um, the healing power of sh shared pain. Oh, absolutely, George. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all... You know, we're all in this. We're all kind of all in this together. Um, I don't know if you know who Lewis House is, but he's a big podcaster out there. And Lewis has a great quote. Um, don't be, you know, don't hate on. I'll, I'll butcher, butcher it, but I'll get the context. Don't hate on people in their winning season because you don't know what they went through in their losing season. And, you know, and he goes on to share when he talks about that, that really seeing people who are successful is a good thing for us because it demonstrates what's possible. You know, we can look at those people and say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm happy for them. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. I want that, but I'm not hating on them. It's like that, it's entirely possible that that can happen. You know, Colonel Sanders came up with Kentucky Fried Chicken when he was 65 years old. I mean, that ought to be, a, you know, that ought to be enlightening for pretty much everybody out there that, you know, you might not, you know, have, the great chicken fried chicken recipe, but you can do something, you know, even if you haven't hit your home run yet, there's something, there's still a chance out there. And uh, yeah, so it's, you know, it's, you know, it's being uplifting to one another and setting an example. Frank, when you attend a networking event, what's your, other than your cloak, other than your cloak of uh, in, invincibility, not invisibility. <laughs> right. Nobody can see me. Nobody can see me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what what routine do you go for to prepare, and what routine do you go through after? Yeah, I mean, as far as preparation goes, um, you know, I have a list of questions in my head. Um, I. I have them written out as well, and I share them with people if they want them. I think there's only seven of them. 
and I don't use them all, but they're great icebreakers. Like, hey, how'd you get started in business? That's a great icebreaker. You know, you're not from here. Where are you from? Or, you know, where did you go to? You're from here. Where'd you go to high school? You know, just to kind of get them talking, you know, oh, you went to Worthington. You know, you go to you lived in Worthington. You'd go to Kilbourne or did you go to, the, you know, Thomas Worthington? You know, so you, you can kind of have that conversation. Um, and then it and, you know, so I'm prepared with those questions and they're generally not yes or no questions, just trying to get the person talking. And usually one of those questions will kind of ignite the conversation and, oh, you're from Wisconsin, you must be a Packer fan, right? And that just sends it off on a whole nother conversation. Occasionally, you'll get the person who's like, well, I'm not a sports fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but um, so that's really kind of how I prepare to to go to the events. I, I certainly make sure I have business cards. Um, I f- always find I have more business cards than I need. You know, I'm getting five, I'm handing out five, but I might have 25 in my pocket. You know, it's just, it's a, it's kind of a scarcity mentality or, um, don't, I don't want to lose out kind of a thing. Um, you know, on the tail end of it, I, I like to write people handwritten notes. Um, and that's not always easy because people don't always reveal their addresses. Um, they work from home and I totally understand it, but I want to, you know, it's so easy just to send an email, George, right? I mean, it's just, it's, it's super easy to do that. Um, and because it's super easy, people will do that. Now, not everybody does, but I will follow up. Um, I don't like to hit people up with LinkedIn requests right away. It just seems disingenuous. You know, I can, I can leave and be on my phone and connect with them. It seems a little too desperate. Um, but if I have somebody's card and I, and there's an address on there, um, what I have been known to do is I will like drive a mile away from wherever and I'll just write them a quick little, I'll have, I'll have cards in the car, little notes, no note cards. And I'll write them. Hey, it was great to meet you. You know, hope you had good, good, uh, good time skiing this past weekend. I'll follow up about coffee, you know, you know, just kind of reflecting on our conversation and, um, you know, invest in cards, invest in stamps. They got a great ROI. Um, it really has a lasting value. I have a whole stack here. People who have sent me handwritten cards. In fact, there's around my office, I have them all stapled to the wall. I mean, just little handwritten. I keep them. I, I'm not going to print somebody's email out and stash it up there. Um, but somebody who's gone through that effort, I'm going to keep it. And uh, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it ultimately, but I've got them for now. Um so I certainly make, you know, make that routine. I, I certainly follow through on the things I said. Uh, I have a list of things here. We're recording on a Monday morning of people that I met late last week that I've made some promises to. I need to connect this person to this person. I'm inviting this person to this event. I need to follow through on the things I say. Um, so certainly organizing thoughts. And again, that's, you know, that's why you don't want to meet 25 people because you just can't keep it straight, you know? Um, you know, five, five's plenty, you know, three's fine, you know, one's probably too small of a number, but you know, two, three, four, that's fine. Uh, Frank, and if people would like to know more about you, uh, and am spirits, they can find more information at the website. What else might they learn from you? Well, the best place I would send people, I have a website out there, frankagan.com, which is kind of all things, all things Frank Agan. He'll lead you to AmSpirit Business Connections. And AmSpirit is a is a networking organization similar to a BNI. Uh, we have weekly meetings. And if people are interested in referrals, they can go there. Um, other things they can learn from me, I'm, you know, I'm about networking and not everybody is and not everybody is a suitable person to be in AmSpirit Business Connections. They're just not. But everybody needs to network. Everybody needs to understand network networking. Um, I have a lot of information um, on there. Uh, can lead them to our blog, which has lots of information on networking. And uh, you can get to that networking-rx.com. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Just, you know, little tidbits that people can, can learn from. Um, you know, it's all... Uh, you know, it's all good stuff. Mm, good. And uh, listeners can find the links 
uh, to those websites in the description below. Uh, Frank, in preparing to wrap up, if you could have a coffee with a, an aspiring business leader and you could give them one, two, or three bits of advice to carry them that will help them build their career by taking advantage of networking, what would you say? And maybe it's something you've already said. What would you tell that aspiring business leader? Yeah, no, I think it's a good thing to to wrap up uh, our, our little talk on the uh, Your Intended Message podcast. I'm pretty consistent about this, um, and I haven't mentioned it yet, but I tell people, because people are leery about going to networking events, um, and, I, and I get it. We are, you know, as humans, we developed in tribes of about 150 people, and you only saw those 150 people your whole life. And when you saw a stranger, it was not a good thing. And this is this is tens of thousands of years of human development. So we come by this apprehension of going to networking events honestly. <clears throat> and so if you're truly afraid of those things, I get it. A great way to get going is this. Find something you're passionate about. Homelessness, you know. Uh, dog charities or, or pet charities. Um, you know, I bought a camera and hung out with my kids' schools and went to sporting events and took pictures. You know, um, that was very antisocial. I never sat with my wife to watch games. Um, but find something that you're passionate about and go devote time to it because you're going to be doing it with other people, other people who are really um really committed to homelessness for example or you know food insecurity and you're going to be working elbow to elbow with those people and they will find out about you but the other neat thing about that is is that you will not only have kind of given yourself an excuse in a quiet sort of way to get out and network other people are going to see other people who don't even really care about what you care about are going to see that you're committed to that and they're going to know that okay that george he's a good guy you know, he's on the board for that. He cannot be all bad. I might not care about what he cares about, but I'm it's nice to see how passionate he is. And I just know from that reason alone that he's a good guy and I can trust him. So mm. that's my parting shot. Powerful advice, Frank. Thank you for that. My guest today is Frank Agan, reminding you that uh, when you are attending a networking event, put on your cloak of invincibility because you were there to help other people. If you like what you heard, remember to like, comment, and share this podcast. Come back every week for more practical insights to help you convey your intended message. I'm your host, George Torok.